and there we're back again new day new topic new webinar i hope you still feel good outside and that you are enjoying our webinars we are enjoying it here me and jimmy producing them and doing them it's really nice and we sometimes we get surprised ourselves what we find in our products that we have uh, this session will be about the dvar hybrid and the dvar network and really put some focus on these units as you saw in the hopefully in the bvms session they can be a building block in a huge system they can be a standalone unit using the bvms viewer as the as the viewing interface today we will be focusing a little bit more about how they look like in their own environment as a standalone unit either if you use them with the direct attached mouse to the unit itself or you use them together with their web configuration client and the web viewer client so let's focus on the dvar hybrid and dvar network they are considered to be what shall i say in the entry level we position them a bit into the lower value level and the lower feature set but you should not underestimate the simplicity and the easiness of the installation that is one of the reasons why i really like these units they're simple to set up they're fast to set up and they're really easy for an end user to understand and if you as a system integrator knows how to use the bvms viewer you can also use the bvms viewer for these ones it's really nice software and it's simple to install and it's simple to use both for you and for the end user so focus on these units in the portfolio we have we are really seeing them as entry-level units when we are considering them as entry-level units it's a bit about the feature set because these units don't have iSCSI recording so you will not have the fully blown iSCSI recording and the full metadata support you can generate alarms and events out of the metadata but you will not have the same search positions and search functionality as you have in the DVAR IP all in once. That is the thing that is differentiating between the DVAR hybrid and network and the DVAR IP all in once. So that is the important thing to remember. You can trigger alarms out of the IVA or EVA, but you will not have the metadata search. That is one major difference, and perhaps that's also why we put them in a bit of a lower position when it comes to the value change still this is a solution for all suitable types of recording solutions there will always be somebody who needs a simple to use simple to install user-friendly unit at the low price that is the or hybrid and network they're positioned also price-wise in an entry-level market an entry-level unit with high performance and high quality we see them to be able to use in several different applications in many different verticals and going from the two and three thousand series you also have the ability to step up step up to the five thousand series if you would like to connect for example a keyboard if you would like to have an intuit key unit to be able to control moving cameras if you need to go into higher channel counts if you need more hard drives to give you much more storage you go into the 5000 mode and what you also see here is that we divide them into desktop models and rack mount models uh, the picture is lying a bit the 3000 and 2000 are quite smaller than the 5000 so the 5000 are made to put in a rack there are also accessories to put the two and three thousand in a rack if you would like to hybrid models they have the ability to connect analog cameras different markets here in the nordic region still have a lot of analog cameras out there so if you need to put analog cameras in and mix them with ip cameras the hybrid is a perfect choice also you have in the ip based versions the dvar network you have the possibility to use the built-in power or ethernet switch so you don't need an extra switch with power or ethernet to power your cameras so that's also a very nice functionality that makes the installation simpler and easier you also have the possibility to use it and connect it with a keyboard in intuit key if you would like to control the moving cameras and you remember what i said about the bvms viewer as a software it's a very nice one 
But what we will do today is to demonstrate the possibility to use either the unit with the interface on itself or to use it as a configured unit and the client we have to do it web-based. So now it's time for Jimmy to start doing his demonstration. Before you do that, I will go over to this uh, DVAR network we have in the office and give you some hints about how it looks like. So hang on. We will start by using this DVAR network we have here in the, in the derm room. So welcome to this view, different camera, same manners. Uh, this is the view from the DVAR network. Uh, we will do all the configuration through the web interface. But I would like to show you that the settings are exactly the same if you do it directly on the unit itself or if you do it on your web interface. So also what you can see here is that we have no cameras connected or configured yet. That will be something Jimmy will be doing soon. Uh, right clicking, you will be able to get to the main menu. Here we ha <coughs> have the different options what you would like to do. First of all, you would like to do your settings, hopefully. You have all the different tabs here you will see uh, also being available in the web interface. So general, playback, display, serial port, account service, all the stuff is here. So I don't think this is the best way to show the settings. So instead, we're going over to Jimmy and Jimmy will connect through the web software or the web client to do this. So over to you, Jimmy. Thank you, Anders. And now I have connected with the web browser to the Devar network device. I add the username and the password and I press login. And now I can see the live view of this device. Since we don't have any cameras, we have nothing to see. But here is the logical tree of the cameras. I will go into settings to add a camera so we have something to see. I go into settings and now you can see the same menu that Anders saw locally on the device. I have set the time already so we don't need to do that. So we go directly to add a camera. I go into the camera menu and press detection. The device is now scanning the network and I will find my camera and press add. Now the camera has been added and I need to set the password. And then I press save. And now the camera has been added. And that's how easy it is to add the camera. Now we can do some more configuration. I will go to configuration and here we can see a camera name. So I can name the camera. And I can change the ports if I would like to. You can also, if you want to, put an overlay and use privacy masks. And you also have pan tilt, zoom functions if it's a PTZ camera. Jimmy, if we would like to do some settings of the of the camera with lens, for example, that's something you could demonstrate? Yes. So I will go into the installer menu. And here we can also see that we can set the variant and the base frame rate of the cameras. Uh, but now I'm going to lens wizard. And here I can set the focus and zoom. And I can also, of course, since this is a 8000i, I can also move the camera to what I want to see. So all the PTR setting of this Flexidum 8000i is reachable through the, through the interface. And it's not just the interface through the web client. It's also if you would like to do it directly on a unit. Yes. Now when I am happy, I can uh, go over to live. I can select uh, the camera. And now I have a live view. 
I can also go into playback by pressing playback. I can select on the timeline and I see my picture from the camera. Thank you, Jimmy. That was the part of the embedded client, the web client, how to do some configuration and some, some pretty simple setup. You have the camera up and running in a few minutes. Also setting all the viewing areas and viewing angles for the PTR set camera, the Flexi 8009. In the general recording sessions we did uh, two days ago, I think it was, we showed you how it looks like in the BVMS viewer. Now I would like Jimmy to also do some configuration and adding a CVR network into the BVMS viewer. So Jimmy, here we go again. Thank you, Anders. So when adding this DVR network device in a BVMS viewer, you go to DVR, add DVR, enter the information, and also the username and the password. And I press scan. So now I can see the cameras, I can see the inputs and the relays of the device. And then I can go over to structure to add which cameras I want added in my logical tree. I have only added one camera, but if I want to, I can add everything, but it will look like it's offline. Okay, thank you, Yemez. Um, what you might remember out of the BVMS session, you can use the DVR network as a building block to build a huge system or have, have as a remote site or whatever you would like. That's just a piece of Lego or whatever that you're using in your building blocks. Uh, I would ask him to in a few seconds to go over to the operator client also in the, in the BVMS viewer to see how it looks like with this DVR network and its user interface. Uh, it's just another source. It looks like exactly if you had a local camera or if you have a DVR uh, IP, a DVR IP all-in-one. All these different things you have added as something in the local tree of the BVMS viewer will be part of the user's interface. So what you will see in a few seconds when I head over to Jimmy is how it looks like just with this camera that you saw uh, in the DVR network. So please bear in mind, you can use the unit as it itself, itself, local on the unit. You can use the configuration client and the web interface to view it live. And you can also use the BVMS viewer. So Jimmy, once again, back to you. Thank you, Anders. So now I did open the operator client and I can see all the cameras and relays and the in, uh, inputs I added to the system. I can add a camera and I get the picture from the camera that we did install. And of course, I can also switch to playback Add the camera in playback mode. And check on the timeline to see the recordings. Thank you, Jimmy. W one thing I mentioned earlier in this um, presentation is that we don't have metadata recording from the cameras, the Bosch cameras, into the DVR network. So one thing that will differ from this one in the BVMS viewer is that you cannot do forensic search on the metadata. That's one thing that is the difference. Apart from that, most of the things that you have seen today is uh, part of the scope. It's up to you how you would like to use the solution. If you are the guy who just likes to use the box itself, if you would like to use it by the web browser, or if you would like to use the BVMS viewer. It's up to you. And that is pretty much what we had planned for you today, me and Jimmy. Some demonstrations and some presentations. I, I really hope you enjoyed this one, because I think we have not put enough effort into the DVR hybrid network. It's really nice units, and it's also, as I mentioned, the 
bits and pieces of the Lego as building blocks to be able to bring big solution into one enterprise environment. So from me and Jimmy, thank you to every one of you out there and stay safe and let's see you in a webinar soon again. Bye from us.